morning, everybody. Pete here from Intricate Nature, and I uh, just wanted to show you something that I've been working on. Uh, winter time here now, and uh, one of the best things you can do for winter time is little projects. One of those little projects I decided to make was uh, this sled. So the sled is pretty cool. It's uh, made out of hickory. I harvested a hickory. You see how it's different? The grain is different. It's because this is the outer edge of the tree and this is the inner edge. And the reason that I didn't flip this over and both use both outer edges, which would have been ideally better, was because when I split the wood in half, this already had a general curve to it and this had a general curve to it. So it's actually this piece over the top of this piece and that became the piece of the tree. So, uh, no, I did not cut the whole tree down, just a section of it. Uh, the tree was split in two, and I took one down so that the other side, oops, sorry, would the other side would uh, grow better. So uh, had to be done eventually. Uh, now we're using it to put it to good use. So uh, this is my prototype right here. And uh, then this legs are maple. And the uh, upper arms, the guard guides, are maple. Then after I put them on, I tapered them down to just to reduce weight a little bit and give me a little more strength in the front. Uh, the front of this is wired from this point to that point. You could use uh, rawhide, but uh, I didn't have any made up, so I went with the copper because the uh, the uh, idea had an option one, option one, option two, so I did the wire instead, although it looks pretty cool. I'll be giving you some close-ups here in a minute. Uh, these hickory, I put the log on my shave horse, and uh, I'll put the uh, link to the shave horse up here. And anyway, uh, so you can build your own if you want. I put the log on the, uh, I put on a stump first, and then I used the tomahawk to uh, square the edges and I'll show you a picture of that. And then I put on a shave horse and I cleaned it out a little bit. And then I put it into a vise and I made notch cuts right here just to give myself a little raise point for these legs to go into. Now these could be thicker, so these raise points could be higher. Uh, I only had what I had tree-wise to work with, although a bigger branch would have been better than a smaller branch. So it is what it is. Uh, but it still works just fine. So then after I after I put those uh, cuts into it, and I got my put this on the shave horse and I actually used my draw knife and I cleaned out the inside, the edge, and this edge. And uh, both sides, I did both the runs. And then, when it's all good to go, I sanded it all down, nice and smooth. And then I took it and I put it in a, in a uh, water bucket. And then I boiled it, and I boiled it for about an hour, and then I put them on a form and uh, tightened them up over the top of the form. I used a rounded form and let them dry. I let them dry in the, on the form, in the clamps for 48 to about 48 hours. And then when I took it off, they didn't move whatsoever. A little bit of flex, which was good because I, because uh, even though they're on the form, each piece is its own piece of wood, so in order to make them the same, you do a little flexion here and there, and that's okay. Uh, and then, so that, that covers the sides, that covers the uh, runners. This in here is arched square here. Arched, you can see that there in the camera. Uh, I have it arched there. And this piece of wood, this side, and the slats, used to be a greenhouse. So this is sassafras, and uh, it came off a greenhouse that was built in the 1950s, and they tore it down in the 1980s as it was collapsing. It was in the back of someone's yard in a, in a suburban neighborhood of a city. And I was contacted by somebody I know, and they said, hey, we got a pile of this sassafras. We don't, want any, we don't want to throw it out. We want it to go to good use and give to you. So that's recycled sassafras from 1950. Who knows how long ago it it, uh, it was made, but uh, it's just as strong and very super, super light. So 
This is very light because it's sassafras. Hickory's got a little weight to it, and maple's got a little weight to it, but this thing is very light. It's it's very comfortable. And the nice thing about it being light is that not only is it a sled, but it can also be a pack. You see this, how it's curved. This is a perfect train pack. I could put my load back here. It's arched or curved to the back. Put my straps down in a little bit. I'm going to show you how it works both ways. And that's the whole idea behind building this was to give myself something that I could put on the ground, put my load on it, and carry it across the snow. And when I got to an area like rocky terrain or over bushes and trees, I can just as easily flip my load from this side to this side, put it on my shoulders like a pack, and keep on going. So this is a pack sled, lightweight, trackable, traditional to a certain extent. Uh, it could be look a little more traditional if I send you the end, if I send you the ends. Uh, one of the things that added that's not traditional is in modern day we now have uh, adhesives that are incredible, almost better than nails. I did screw it in this right here. I did uh, screw it in here, and I did screw it in here. It called for nails. I used screws uh, just because my personal uh, woodworking beliefs is to have a little more strength with the screw. And if it's set properly and, and put in properly, it's going to last a lot longer. Uh, we'll see if I'm proven wrong. But uh, with modern adhesive, I put a little dab of glue everywhere. It becomes like a backup clamp for every single joint. So every joint has a little dab of glue on it, which makes this thing super strong, which is what you need when you're going to actually go tracking, because you know a lot of our tracking stuff is aluminum or our, our carbon composite, composite or something. And I go, this is traditional, yet has modern modern uh, additives to it, and it'll be super okay, strong. A second, and now I want to show you, anyway, I've what we got up, here. Uh, show you how Tap intro. Uh, natural cordage, a little rope. So I made a loop, bubbled my cordage in half, made a loop, lifted over, put the one side up, under through here, out here, over, and back under and through. So it comes out like this. Same with that, same with the other side. So now I have, this is my frame, this is my pull. Uh, it easily pulls across the landscape and then I can take my load which is my blanket here and uh, this is a recycled blanket found it at a thrift shop see that edge on there it was brilliant white and I dyed it came out pretty good it's full-size queen heavy rugged You could put this on here. That's your loadout. My oil skin, which is right here. So go around I had to it. figure it out for a second off the camera. Basically, what we have here is we take our load from that side to this side. Put it this way or that way. I've chosen this way. And what I do is take that, which is where you're pulling from here. Load this. Backwards, so it's upside down. Take one, loop it up, go around over here. One, loop it, go around here. So now you have your loads here, like so. Take your load. Put it on there. Crisscross it. Like so. And there you have it. Now, you can either put it straight on like this, you could loop it first and put it on like that, depending upon how you, how much rope you have, how you feel like packing it, but for uh, intensive purposes, we're going to just, uh, now I'm going to have to do something here because, 
don't want it falling off my camera. Put this back up. Having these slats like this gives us a lot of options. And I know as soon as I put this out, there'll probably be 50 videos like this. Same one, same style, made out of everything from green material to a caboose. But imitation being the highest form of flattery in most some cases, it's good to show the traditional one first. If there's enough, you can tie it to the front. If not, you can tie it to the back. There you have it, packable loading load uh, pack sled. Ready to go, comfortable to wear. So, I want to put this little part at the end. This idea, I've seen it in my book that I have. I've seen it for years. I've looked at it for years, never did anything about it, never bet one, never thought about the uh, traditional or non-traditional until recently. My friend Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft, I'll put his link anyway, he's on Instagram too, as uh, am I. And uh, he posted a picture recently, he uh, looked like an older, maybe black and white traditional picture. And uh, he was, he's like, he was very interested in one of these. And uh, everybody really was pretty excited. He got a lot of attention on that photo. And I recently contacted him and said, hey, I got the plans for those, and I'm building one. So uh, he wanted me to show him pictures and everything, so I figured a video would work better. Anyway, I want to thank him for posting that because it really kind of jump-started it to a certain extent. I mean, I've had the information for years, but I really didn't do much with it. But the fact that there was actually interest in this actually pushed me to make one. So uh, by working together and uh, sharing knowledge, sharing talents, uh, sharing around the campfire, we can all uh, get together and work together. No one person has all the answers. So uh, thank you, Brian. And... Uh, Check them out at Snowwalker Bushcraft. Take care.